I don't know, but there's got to be something that would be off limits. What's the one thing you hope no one ever asks? We're Kaylee and Lindy. Each week on this vlog, we take you behind the scenes as we develop our two-acre permaculture homestead and grow our own food. Join us this week as we share some of our biggest goals for 2022. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, which helps us get introduced to more amazing people just like you. I Welcome back to Up. the vlog. Um, so today's a nice, gorgeous, sunny day and we have just been kind of taking it easy. So what we thought would be fun this week for the vlog is a property walkabout. <laughs> yeah, so we have this thing and I'm sure we made it up, but we call them property walkabouts. We started these years ago and basically it's just an opportunity for us to literally walk the property and have time to kind of discuss it together so i don't i don't know how would you explain it yeah i think at the beginning it was really a great way for me to waste time in between <laughs> projects being like babe let's really just take you know an inventory let's, of everything right. and you know if there's an opportunity for planning i'm like yes and if there's an opportunity for let's me to do it be lazy i want it so <laughs> so it works very well for both of us yeah. Really now they've kind of really progressed for us to do an inventory of where we're at with projects, um, what we need to finish with projects because we have a tendency to do multiple at the same mm -hmm. time. Um, it's also usually where we discover that I might have ideas and she might yes. have ideas and we never had conversations. So those are always fun to right. discover too. Yeah, so it's just a really good opportunity for us to like be in the space, communicate about it because sometimes like Lindy said, you have different ideas. And, and let's be honest, my yeah. ideas are better. Okay, um, and then when you're actually in the space looking at it, it, things change, right? And so it's also just a chance for us to kind of look at the property, kind of see everything that we've done, and kind of take stock of that, and then also talk about our future projects. This is really the first property walkabout that we've gotten to do in 2022. So we oh, are yeah. going, yeah. So we're going to talk about some of our bigger projects that we're going to be working on this year, and then also kind of talk about what we've done so far. We just celebrated our two-year anniversary of being at this property. Um, That's and, nuts. Yeah, and so we're going to talk about some of that and then mixed in we're going to do a couple of Q&A's of some of the common questions that we get from people. So that's what we're doing today. Okay, so here we are in the front yard and what are we working on in this space? So, a couple different things. Um, you finished the plants along the sidewalk but we've got yeah. some new shrubs in place. 
we're kind of hoping to create more of a living border if you will because the road's right there yeah so uh, we we want more privacy it's very open to the road which we don't mind but some we privacy would be great either. yeah so we've planted a lot so basically our plan is that one day this entire perimeter around the fence is going to actually be planted up so they'll all be bed space and it'll just be kind of like a half arc of the lawn so I've started some of the planting over here. So I planted two elderberries, a blueberry, a host of berry, and I've got some other shrubs I want to kind of plug in as well. I just haven't found them yet. Um, like a cornelian cherry, a sea berry, things like that. Um, but this is north facing. So the nice thing about that is we can actually stack taller plants along this side. So that's why I do like the 10 foot shrubs and things like that on that oh. side and then we still get this nice bowl of sun where we can then plant smaller things as we come down smart so we try to capitalize on sun as much as we can here because like we're in the pacific northwest we don't capitalize on sun. you <laughs> capitalize on that because you understand <laughs> i just do the things she does what she's told and that is just as important ladies and gentlemen sometimes i sometimes, do sometimes yeah we do have three dwarf apples um which are very old and i love them they produce actually really well and then we do have two hawthorns as well along the fence so i do want to plug in like i said i've put in some of the larger shrubs um, but i'd also like to do some columnar fruits in this area as well um so those are fruit trees that are trained to basically grow pretty much straight up Thanks, glad you explained Yes. <laughs> I was like, so, yeah, that. They're really good to plug into smaller spaces. <laughs> All right, let's walk over and I'll show you one of the fun areas that we're developing. Yeah. So we are over here on the side of the house now. So this is the east side of the house. The garden is right over there. This area is basically just a strip. It's just a strip of lawn. Um, so I have been working on this planter bed that's all along here and we've been plugging in bunches and bunches of number one fast growing ground cover um so calendula things like that that reseed easily so that is helping immensely with the grass that used to be very aggressive over there so i transplanted some rhubarb over there um i've put broccoli over there i've got my collards over there my tree collards oh some aronia berries so I've been really plugging in. You can see there's an old mullein here. Um, so plugging a lot of, again, perennial foods, berry bushes, and perennial herbs or fast seeding plants. So I want it to be low maintenance over here. But the thing that I'm really excited about this space, and I do have a full video coming on this, um, but I wanna see some results first, is we are doing a meadow lawn. So you can kind of see through here a little green pathway Look, skip the pathway lindy go skip oh she's such a good skipper <laughs> stanley's back here stan so you can see the little what? so you can see the little pathway and basically that's where we will mow the rest of it i have basically covered in a very thin layer of soil basically i overseeded the grass in this area with wildflowers I'm so excited. So basically on either side of this little strip, we will no longer mow the grass. Yes, it will get tall. Yes, there will be weeds, but there will also be a ton of wildflowers. And I'm so excited. I've always wanted a meadow lawn and I think, I think it's working. So I have a full video, but I'm not gonna post it until we see the results. Um, but it does show the process of how we converted this area from just a basic lawn into the meadow lawn. So that will be fun to watch this summer. I love flowers, uh, like a level of stupid, kind of like she loves her produce. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it was kind of complimentary for both. Mm -hmm. Plus it's just overall like better for the environment, obviously, like, you know, we provide so much habitat and just natural spaces for insects, for pollinators, for wildlife. And what it also does is reduce our workload. So this property has a lot mm -hmm. of grass. <laughs> like when we moved here, it was just, all grass. I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> like, that doesn't work for me. I hate to mow. I really hate lawns in general. She does. So we're converting a lot of spaces like this and there's not going to be a ton of lawn left. I love the lawn for pathways and outside of that, you know, a couple of special little spaces. But other than that, it's kind of a waste of space. So. I love lawns, but I love specific like purposeful yes that's, intentional spaces that's that fair. are lawns. Which is what we are doing. Yes. So 
somebody. Yeah. So this is a fence space. Let's go. On to the next one. Here we are in the garden. So this is basically the side of the garden that you usually see. So this is our half arc. This is what you're used to seeing in videos and photos is this half of the garden. What you don't always see is the other half over here. So this is the side closer to the house. And what's unique about this side is that the drain field for the septic is over here somewhere. Keyword being somewhere. Um, our house is old enough that there are no plans on record with the county. I have done everything to try and track them down. There are no drawings. There are no records. Um, the septic company that serviced it for years, obviously they know where the septic is. No idea where the drain field is. You know, we obviously can kind of tell about where the septic is from snow melt. So that's always a good indicator. If you aren't sure where it's at, watch where it melts back because all of those gases produce heat. So that gives you a better idea of where the septic is. And then you can kind of measure out from there to kind of find the drain field. If you know the general direction it goes. Waiting for the dogs to stop barking and the cars to stop driving by. So that's why the garden is actually pushed out as far as it is away from the house. Um, this was still the best location by far. It was already fenced on all four sides. Yeah, because this used to be an arena. Yeah, this was an arena. So it, it was just a perfect size. It's at the perfect location from the house. It was already fenced and it gets awesome sunlight, which if you've ever lived in Washington, you know that is something you gotta capitalize on. I might need to break it down a little bit more. So you guys, so they're apparently, <laughs> hypothetically speaking, the sun is this entity in the sky, which is there right now. And rumor has it everywhere but the state of Washington, it produces heat. Mm. We haven't experienced that here, but I hear it's very nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although that is one of the reasons that we moved here. So It's true. Heat's bad. Yeah. Your stars don't recommend. People with MS and heat don't mix. No. At least this one doesn't. Um, so anyways, so that's why we picked this spot for the garden. If you are picking a spot for your garden, like sunlight is just so, so important. Don't overlook it. So we know that the septic comes pretty much straight out from the house about where this gate is. So over here where the chickens currently are is where we are planning to put our new row garden area. Um, so we need more space than just what the in-ground beds or the above ground beds give us. I love the raised beds, but we need more space. <laughs> so we are going to this year create some row gardens using a no-till approach. Um, it is off from where the drain field is. As far as we know, <laughs> we have measured and measured and watched and observed as much as we possibly can. So we're going for it. Sometimes you just have to. That's the space we have. We're going to use it. So right now we're moving the tractor chickens around. We use them to prep the ground space in any of our new garden areas. So they are moving in this giant square <laughs> where they are helping us basically pull back all that grass and then we will sheet mulch it um, and create our row gardens. So we will have lots of cucumbers this year if so all goes as planned. I have a question for you that I don't have an answer to. So is this row garden considered phase two or phase three? Technically, this was supposed to be phase three. So the way I designed the garden space is I had phases as to how we would build it out. So this is great if you're developing a property and you can't do it all at once, right? So you need to think about what's going to have the best impact. So phase one was basically getting our above ground beds, our raised beds built so that we could have produce in the first year, which we did. Yep. Phase Killed. two was starting to prep the giant wraparound perennial bed area, which we are in the process of. However, phase two had to be started soon because it's such a big space. It's going to take us a long time to do it. And it's overlapping with phase three, which is creating these row beds, which won't take us long to create and get into production. And for like zone two, Kaylee did, uh, as always, really good planning. The things that take forever to mature yeah. is like a fruit tree. So we got, yeah, let's actually walk over there. Okay, so we have our raised beds all along here. They are arranged in a half arc to catch that sunlight. And then behind it in a half arc, it's this large perennial garden space. So you can see we've already started it. And if you watched my no-till video, that was the area I was working on. 
putting in the the plants that take forever to mature fruit trees are a great yeah. example of that yeah so a lot of those perennial trees and shrubs we put them in mulch around them and then we just meet up to that with our sheet mulching oh stanley's knocking the camera over i got it i got it <laughs> this year and next year are both going to be very heavy planting years for those type of trees and bushes and shrubs um berries things like that so the sooner we can get them in the ground the better but the couple first years of planning were also vital. Well, and that's like we earned the right to be able to plant, yes. right? So it's not that two years we were lazy. It was right. two years of us actually sitting on our hands and being patient, came yes. more than me, so that we can really understand how to work better with our yeah. property because we'll lose the fight to mother nature every time. So those are the big projects that are happening in the garden this year. Not a lot as far as like raised beds. I don't have can any- Can we talk about my vision and dream? What's your vision and dream? For your garden. Well, you know about it, you know about it. Okay, so what? go with me, you guys, this is my favorite. I want to build a very eclectic and repurposed shed. You know oh, about yes. this. Oh, yes, yes. Shed over here. Up on your face. Oh man, that's upsetting. I got it. Did you hurt it? No, I just pushed it off. Okay, you can just squish it on my nose. <laughs> um, <laughs> bam. So anyway, I'm really excited to build a very cute and charming shed. Garden shed. With uh, pergola built over it because yeah, rain. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so it'll have like a processing space. Yeah. So that when we're out here, because we're out here all the time, spending it'll have so much power time run to it. Because I've got a bunch of extra space on my. Um, yeah, on the breaker. On the breaker box. Oh, the other thing. What um, that we might do this year, hopefully if we can find the supplies because they're going to be salvaged. The spiral. Yes, spiral. the herbal. Oh. Stanley's excited He's too. very. An herb spiral. Yes, so we might be doing an herb spiral no, no, as well. No. We're not might, we will be. Okay, well we will be, but we might be doing it this year. Yeah, that's true. Talking about projects this year. Um, really, it's we're going to use reclaimed materials for it. Um, I already have the little pond that goes at the bottom. For those of you on Instagram, if you saw my herb spiral design that I did last year in my 30 polycultures in 30 days project, um, it was the final one, and that was the oh, design for yeah. it. Um, oh, the zen, the zen path. Oh, yes. The zen path. The mandala So garden. we can do this. Yeah, okay, so that's another plane down the road. Having a little mandala garden in the corner where the, basically where the septic part is. Um, so it would be interplanted with native species and wildflowers. And yeah, it would be a mandala garden where you, you basically, you walk it for meditation. So that's, that's what I was doing. That's, in yes, that's what that, that penguin walk. That's, that's what that was. <laughs> apparently how you do it. So yes, I think that's it. But this year focusing on you know, the biggest priorities are continuing the planting of the perennial plants, oh. continuing the mulching of the giant zone two area and getting that row garden in, which will happen before, really before summer, cause we need it, we need the space to plant things. So let's go check out something else. The old barn is right behind us. Wait, I have an idea. Let's stop the property walkabout and let's answer oh, a question. Yes, let's answer a question. What question? Okay, we get a what lot of them. Is Stanley besides annoying? <laughs> so Stanley is a Saint Labrabal. <laughs> That's what we call him. Um, so he was found out in a box <laughs> on the side of the road. So obviously we don't know, but we had him DNA tested. Um, St. Bernard was his largest percentage, followed by Pitbull, and then Lab. He was St. Bernard by 48%. He's yeah. half St. Bernard. Yeah, but it shows. Right, and then I, the other largest percentage was like Pitbull and American Staffordshire Terrier. He only had four things in him. And yeah, and then Lab. So yeah, he's a St. Labrable. He's adorable. So are we gonna talk about the barn next? Yes, so let's we can, we talk, talk about, about the old here barn right now. And then yeah. we can go in. Yeah, so behind us is the old barn. It is lovely. It did not look like this when we first bought the property. Um, I'll put up some video slash pictures right now of what it looked like originally. This barn is over a hundred years old, um, yep. at least a hundred years old. I think it's probably closer to 120. This barn is gorge. It has the original like cedar plank walls. It has the cedar shake roof. It, it's dreamy, like so dreamy. Um, and it's going to fall down if we don't keep working on it. So in 2020, yep, right after we got here that summer, August of 2020. Yeah, we did a lot of work on it. Um, and then when our friends moved in next door, 
their animals um, have been residing in there because they don't have a, you know, a proper barn on their property. Well, that's changing soon and we are going to be able to start renovations on it again this, I mean, really this spring into summer during the dry season. This, this beautiful thing was jam packed full of stuff. Oh my gosh. Yes. Like we're talking like piles upon piles upon piles. And anybody that lives in Washington or the Pacific Northwest knows that nothing lasts. It was bad, you guys. We found like skeletal remains. Yeah, it, it wasn't in good shape. No. So pouring ourselves into it. We hired, you know, we hauled everything out and then we had to hire a company. It was over a thousand, thousands of dollars at this point that we are into renovating this barn between having all like of the junk removed, you know. 30 tubs of paint. Yeah, I mean, just the amount of stuff that was in it was really costly for us to remove. But we did get some good things out of it. All of the cedar logs that we used to build the garden beds came out of the old barn. So there's been a lot of good things that we have, were able to save and we saved as much as we absolutely We will could. never have to buy you nails. You nails, yeah, the fencing. Fencing, fencing you nails. Nail stakes. stakes. Mm -hmm. We're set up for life, yeah. which that sounds so funny, but it makes my heart happy. Yeah, so there was stuff like that again, like we saved absolutely every resource that we could, but we had to get it cleaned out. Number one thing that we need to do this year is the roof. It is the original shake roof. The and I love it. It is so charming, but it um, <laughs> doesn't work anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> like it's original folks. It is not watertight at all. But before um, we can redo the roof, we have to stabilize, restabilize the building. So last year we actually stabilized half of it by literally jacking up the building. I don't know, like nobody told us that we couldn't do this shit. So we just <clears throat> do it. Like, I don't, one of these days we're gonna kill ourselves, but like we were literally like we jacked up the barn and like put support posts in place put in new posts put in footings um and so we need to do that on the other half of it and then we're yep. going to hire a roofer to come in and put a nice metal roof on it yes so the front facade and this side that you see on the videos have been completely redone we scraped all the old paint this whole side um where lindy is is actually completely redone with concrete siding. The front is still the original cedar. Unfortunately, the other side was not able to be salvaged at all. It was completely rotted through. So we did redo all of that with concrete siding, which will essentially last forever. The front is the original cedar, which we want to keep at least the front and the back as the original cedar, if at all possible. lovely old barn it is very messy right now like I said our neighbors have been using it they're in the process of moving their livestock out so that's why there's like wheelbarrows full of garbage and stuff like that in here um, but we have all of our supplies on this side and this is the half of the barn that we need to basically remove all of this and resupport it you can see it's got quite the sag um, this is the side that we completely redid and it's so much more sturdy so that will be an ongoing project. This is the chicken coop that we built. Yeah. And it has like um, like a foot and a half of concrete basically to raise it up to the level of where once we have the pad in here poured, because we do want this to be completely concrete, um, it will basically, we'll be able to spray it and there'll be a main alleyway it'll where you can spray out. it and it'll flush out. So that's that. And Think then, of them like dairy barns, right? Everything yeah. goes to the middle alley and then out the door. Yeah, and then behind us in the back, we built this other, oh my gosh, there's a hole. Um, behind us in the back, we built this other pen. So this was originally supposed to be our, um, like our rotation goat pen. I don't care how big your goat herd is, you're going to need multiple pens if you plan to breed, yeah. kid, anything like that. You need as many pens as you can get. So we have our primary pen, we have this pen, and we have the kidding pen. Yep. So this is used as a breeding pen. It's used for yearlings, um, all of that good stuff. Um, and I'm very excited to be able to start using it again for those purposes. Again, our neighbors were using it for a year, a uh, year and a half. So we're excited to actually start using it now and just really like making this space our own. I feel like it, we haven't gotten to do that yet. 
Um, but we're so glad that they were able to utilize it. And that's what it's for, right? That's why you always have extra pens. You just don't know. It's true, you guys. It's yeah. true. But it's just really nice to get, have, again, redundancies in your system. Yes. And, and that's I what have, this building does. I'll put the link down below. I have a full blog post about creating redundant systems, um, which is, again, another permaculture principle. And it is one that, like, you cannot have enough redundancy in your system. So I'll put that link down below if you want to go read it. Um, get inspired, you know, start thinking about that for your own property. Yeah, it's gonna be a great project. It's gonna be a lot of work. So that will be once the dry season, because obviously we can't take the roof off during the wet season. Stanley, mom got you a surprise. Sit, sit, sit. I know it's hard. What have you got? It's an egg. He always throws them to break them. Is that so yummy? Did the chickens give that to you? Question time. Why did we move to Washington? To pursue opportunities. Because we were comfortable. Because why not? Yeah. Mostly yeah. for career changes. <laughs> yeah, Lydia got a job up here. Um, I'd never been to Washington. We we pretty much moved right before the pandemic. We got here in February. Everything shut down. It was chaos. The most stressful time of our lives, for yeah. sure. Um, it was a hard transition, but I'm really glad we came. Yeah, it was the right thing. Yeah. It's just funny how life always plays out. Okay, so to wrap up, this is one of the projects that we actually just finished. In our opening video, you'll see Lindy breaking apart those giant slabs of concrete that were in the pasture. So that was more junk that we found on our property when we moved here. And ta-da! Instead of them being a giant junk pile in the gr or in the pasture, now they are this. And this is actually our hotbed. So this is the bed that we use to grow hot loving crops like peppers and okra. Well, or we're going to this year. <laughs> we have not used this yet. This will be the first year. So the wall basically acts to capture and radiate the solar heat and the concrete does the same because it's elevated. Obviously that helps regulate the soil temperature as well. And we get uh, this amazing south and western sun exposure. And this project is a great example of how permaculture all like ties in and, and, and plays so nicely together. So yes. we took a resource that I hated yeah, with that junk stupid pile. chunks of concrete in the pasture. I like, I literally was like, I can't even. Um, and then we took an area that's not complimentary for a lot of plants. Um, mm -hmm. And then like just using the example of like her breaking down that bed that was in the front of the yard yeah. to fill it. Like it's all like it always. Right. And below that. Ties back in. Really like the bottom two thirds of it is manure. So again resources all being used there's always a way to use them you just have to get creative sometimes yep. yeah but what's in them right now are some plants um that i got from the conservation district recently so i got these earlier in the week and these are actually going to be going out to the pasture and planted out in the pasture to create a hedgerow along um, our back horse pasture basically separating it from the road so this is another way of using our resources so and redundancy yes and redundancy Multiple fences. so if you saw and again on instagram last year i did my 30 polycultures in 30 days project one of the designs i did it's called the horse hedgerow that's what these are so that is this design finally being planted so it is a horse safe hedgerow where they can go and graze and um, they can you know, obviously once the plants are established because our fat boys will eat the whole thing for real so what we're trying to figure out right now is basically how to fence the area off so it can get established so we're working on that um and really we're just being lazy because i don't want to put in more t-posts I don't know. That's my only good reason. But it's going to be creating more of like a silvo pasture approach to our pasture area. So instead of just having a big flat grassy area, you have a mix of, you know, basically different um, forage crops, different trees, different bushes, things like that, and creating more of a natural environment where a horse would naturally graze and forage. Well, so, and that's what a lot of people don't realize is they think that uh, our livestock just simply want some grass right. on the ground. But giving them options and variation in their diet will help with their their health, obviously, their mental health. It's, it takes 
the acreage that we've got access to and it allows us to do a more yeah. uh, intense approach without depleting the resources and the soil right um while we do it right because you don't just have to have graze on the ground you go vertical with that so just creating that varied environment in the pasture is one of our big steps for this year and we're starting with planting we planted the chestnuts out there if we are left we did have the baby goats escape and um yeah and they, they found every single little baby stick yep so I'm, I'm gonna check on those and see if they i can get them to come back <laughs> but um planting the hedgerow we are gonna put up proper fencing um i just haven't quite figured out yet what that looks like oh my gosh it's sunshine i know it's bright i don't even know what to do about it Okay, so another question that we got is why, like, why are we doing this? What, what made us take the leap? You know, where we all, did we always live this lifestyle? Is this new to us? How long have we been doing it? That whole question. Um, so it's like yes and no for both, right? We both grew up with ag, um, yeah, being a common presence. And what we, at least for me, I didn't do was a lot of like the plant side of it. Going from permaculture and using it to sustain our right. family is really the focus. We don't do a lot. We don't sell our produce. Right. We, we don't are do not co -ops. farmers. Like sometimes we will say we'll call our property like the farm because yeah, that's I, what I people. I call it the farm because it's easy. Yeah, that's what people can relate to. But yeah. we are not farmers. Like props to every American farmer, every every farmer out there. Honestly, yep. like. Big, small, I don't care, no it, props. It's amazing and it is not what we do. And so we don't ever want to take away from the people who do that hard work. Um, and you know, what we do is very different. We produce for ourselves, um, but we've ultimately been doing this for heavily since I'd say 2015 Correct. was when we really were like, we're going all in and we were living in a cul-de-sac um <laughs> and like lindy always does I'll start with yeah. the animal mm -hmm. it's not a plant we, yeah <laughs> oh man that little house in the cul-de-sac <laughs> saw chickens and ducks and yeah. things it was never supposed yeah, to yeah it was um it was pretty fun there for a bit um yeah. yeah and so we just kind of were like all right let's go for it let's go all in and we never looked back and it's amazing the skills we've grown we would not be the people we are today if well, we hadn't done this but it's crazy where if you just listen to like that little core voice in your yeah. in your in your being and, and you pay attention to the things that bring you joy right. even if they don't make sense like you gotta follow yeah. that because it keeps you going it's funny we say all the time that we feel like we're still kids um because of this lifestyle like it's that same level of like childhood fun that we used to have we're just doing now on a big scale now yeah from my forts that were like super yeah. sketch to like <laughs> now i could build buildings yeah like, it's just grown right but it hasn't changed yeah so we are very lucky to live this way while we've worked very hard to get here we try not to take any of it for granted we are very very grateful for the opportunities and the privileges that have allowed us and still allow us to live this way um you know as a queer interabled couple we try never to take anything for granted and we really do try to recognize those privileges that we have in being able to live this way yeah. and we know that that might not always be the case for others and that might not always be the case for us either we're never guaranteed anything you know especially with health we never know what the next day is going to bring so yeah we just try to live each moment and get as many animals as possible in the process. <laughs> no, we do not. <laughs> plants, you replace animals with plants. <laughs> but that is one of the reasons why we try to set up our property so purposefully. Um, because you don't know what the future will bring. None of us are guaranteed health. None of us are guaranteed any of these things that we have now. So we do what we can in this time and in this place. It's true. Yeah. YOLO or whatnot. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> we're very grateful and we're so grateful for all of you as well. Um, how many people have been interested in this, interested in our story and what we do on a daily basis still just blows us away. So yeah. thank yeah. you truly to all of you. Um, so let us know in the comments below if you have any other questions for us. We're open book, yeah. I think. Let us know. I, I guess some things would be off limits, but for the most part, we're open book. Such as? I don't know, but there's gotta be something that would be off limits. What's the one thing you hope no one ever asks? 
I don't, my address. There. <laughs> don't come That's visit. That's off limits. That's off limits. <laughs> no, you can come visit, but um, it's gotta be scheduled and planned. Yes, I'm a planner. Don't just show up. Don't do it. Don't do it. Please don't. On a serious note, yeah. the level of anxiety that would cause my life would be it's terrible. It's bad. <laughs> um, all right. We'll see y'all next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.